Hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. I'm so glad that you have joined me today for Signs, Wonders, Dreams, Prophecy, Episode 18. This is going to be a special episode. It's a little bittersweet for me because this will be the last episode of Signs and Wonders that I will be doing. Uh, The Father just asked me to take this off of my plate because he has something else that he wants to give me. And sometimes he doesn't tell you what the new thing is. He wants you to trust him and obey and uh, make place for what he wants to bring into your life. So I'll still be doing my weekly videos where I'll be sharing what I've heard from the Father during that week. I'll also be doing interviews. I did one with Ash West this week. Uh, Where in the world? is Ash West. So catch that if you haven't. I also did an interview. Janet Huxley from Color Speak uh, interviewed me this week and catch that one as well. It's uh, just really special. Uh, She's a special, special woman of God. And we just click, you know, Um, so it's, it's really good. All right. Because it's good because the father gets involved, you know, (laughs) All right, well, let's see what the Father has been telling you and showing you this past week as we go through, we will be encouraged. And I was thinking back to the thousands of signs and wonders photos that we have shown, um, not only on this program, but I was doing it with my regular weekly video for about a year before I split them in half. But... um, just think how many how, how many skies people I've taken photographs of and how much he is speaking to us. So that is a great blessing indeed. And he loves his children, loves to interact with us and be with us. We're going to start off with Sarah P. She sent in a poem called Checkmate. Uh, because I mentioned that, I think it was a journal nugget that I reposted that was checkmate. So here's her poem. A whistle of love, a frequency from above. Can you see the sounds of joy? Truth is in the air, so don't despair. Our words create and deploy. That whistle of joy, oh, what a beautiful heavenly sound. A testimony of the overcomer standing their ground. The breath of God flowing through his ambassadors of love. Those willing vessels who speak God's word, and yes, and then go. The sound of sacrificial love overwhelms us and makes the heavens ring. They sing in the storm, arise in the flood, to see what my hope can bring. Whilst you whistle while you work, is what some might say. Work hard. Give it all to God. He will pave the way. Your voice is like a shofar, so sound your whistle of praise. This sound has marked you since birth, so look up to Jesus and pray. God's chess game is ple- is being played out with a surprising strategy. The enemy looks to be winning, but wait till God says, King me. Let the chips fall where they may. The Wizard of Oz is exposed and on display. Brace yourself. Don't blink your eyes. For God is about to say, checkmate. All right. Cherry P received this word on March 8th, which just happens to be my birthday. So I was excited to see that. She heard this in 2016. And it is a direct foreshadowing of what we have been living through. So I want you to hear how God's been speaking consistently and helping his children know what is going on. (laughs) She heard, your country is in the washing machine now. I have done the sorting and have decided the wash cycle, heavy duty, short cycle, and delicate. The ones who go into the cycle are determined by how I see their true heart condition. Some will need more than one wash, and the cycle may be changed according to the resistance to my purpose. 
The detergent I use is the blood of my son. My bride is without spot or wrinkle. So I am very seriously into this cleansing now, top down, not just politics, church, but heads of families. Your country will not look the same in five years. And this will be a good thing. But many who claim me as their God will not like the changes taking place. You must be able to hear me and not the voices of the religious and self-righteous. It's a good word. Karen W. also heard a word called flood. I think you'll like this. She heard this on October 28th of 2024. I am coming in like a flood very soon. A flood of truth. A flood of mercy a flood of deliverance, a flood of beauty. No one will know what hit them. It will be sudden and with my awesome power. I can't wait to give my children my good gifts. This will be the best Christmas season ever. That is a beautiful promise. And Anon sent this poem called One Tree. An angel came and spoke to me one night amidst the shadows. Now, this is the tree speaking. This is his story. My bow bent low. I felt no breeze, only heartache for the hallowed. It seems as though my fate would fall to one for whom a cross would bear. Sins of our present, past, and future, all would change. I felt despair. The depths of darkness came to me as the clouds blanketed the moon. Its glow was gone upon my dreams of growing freely, gone too soon. My branches wept until the morn when sunlight tore through torment and strength returned what lies had torn for truth must master future foment. Yes, the spoken vision was to me the endowment of a servant to glory in humility only. My yes became urgent. For me to die is grateful gain. I hear my master's call to hold him high amidst the pain while he redeems life for us all. And that beautiful how the tree that was chosen to be the cross. I love that. That's very, very precious. And Anon gave us some good tips on how to handle negative feelings. So she said, she said, he said, I, I woke up feeling a little ragged, bluesy, and annoyed with the world this morning. I rose up and decided this just won't do. Went for a prayer walk and counted my many blessings, and rehearsed some of the amazing things God has done for me. Too many to count. On the way back, I had an entirely different outlook, and the Lord completed his good work and turnaround with a little lady on the street coming the other way. I was led to pray with her. Glorious. Being thankful to him for specifics always helps me. Wow. That is great advice. All right. We have a poem from Sarah P called Remnant Rise. Oh, we need this. Don't blink and don't you dare sway, for I am always making a way. Rise up, my child. Do like I do. Shake off the past circumstance. Watch me, follow me, and do my happy dance. You prayed, I heard. You cried, your tears I stored and sang to you my love story. So clap your hands, stomp your feet, raise your arms to the sky, follow me. Feel the earth shake from the glorious victory. Their dominion lost count, but my dominion breathes unity. No stink bait, no fishing pole, no more traps. Just grab your net, throw it to the right and to the left. The harvest is ripe and almost set. Miracles, signs, and wonders are not a joke. My goodness will be seen. My anointing destroys the yoke. 
Prayer warriors, speak up, be bold, be obedient, hear my voice and say yes. Abide in me, my child, seek my face, and you will no longer have to guess. Fly high like an eagle before the brewing and before the clouds form. Do not fear the thunder or lightning, for I am the firestorm. But my promises ring true with beauty and a sound. Find the truth and sell it not, and soon you will be found. The great shepherd has left his beloved flock. He sees and loves you for a price you've been bought. The pearl of great price, so precious and rare, still comes with a choice. Choose this day whom you will serve. My sheep hear my voice. You're the one he sees in the darkest night. When hope is gone, he carries you with power and might. As his fountain of love pours out upon you, be transformed, be restored. You are made new. It's time. It's time. The books are open. You are mine. Remnant rise and take dominion. Let love win and be my light. Beautiful. Beth F. wanted to share a vision she had at Christmas time one year. I want to share an experience I had with Jesus about Christmas. You began this week's prophetic word with a conversation about how you enjoy Christmas and that although, although some feel it shouldn't be celebrated, you focus on how beautiful the lights are, a beacon in the darkness, just as Jesus is. I've always enjoyed Christmas too. But one year, Jesus gave me a glimpse of how he feels about Christmas. It was several years ago, and my children, who are now grown, were elementary school aged. I was feeling particularly busy that year with decorating, gift buying, cooking, and cleaning for extended family coming to my house. I was backing out of the driveway to run another errand when suddenly I had a vision of Jesus in my mind's eye. To be honest, I wasn't even thinking about him at the time, but there he was. He looked every bit a king. He was wearing a white tunic, and he had a gold sash across his shoulder and a gold belt at his waist. He had on a golden crown with beautiful stones. He was dressed for a party. He was smiling and happy and looked so lighthearted. Without talking, he conveyed to me that he enjoyed Christmas because it was his birthday celebration, and it is a time of year when people think about him. I knew without him saying so that he meant that people who don't often think about him or aren't very religious still think about him at Christmas, and it makes him happy. The vision lasted only seconds, but it gave me fresh enthusiasm for celebrating the gift of salvation That was the birth of Christ. All right, celebrate him whenever you want, but celebrate him. (laughs) Margaret Westfall sent us a poem called Marked. And I had an entry. What sparked that was I had an entry that God said that, that both the wicked and the righteous have been marked. Okay, so this is her poem entitled Marked. I'm homesick for a place I've never been, but I'm sure that when I get there, I'll recognize it, and I'll know I've been there before, though I can't even remember when. I long to show the glory of that place. I was created from its substance by the same shining countenance who must have once burned his image on my face. That place I was is where I'll someday be. But not I eat the scroll and become its prophecy revealed. Your sweet, mysterious light calling many home through me. I'm not home yet, but you've made your home in me. And the candle in your window beckons me inside you. Christ in me, the hope of glory, author of my destiny. That is a beautiful poem about being marked by him. Kimberly P. has a 
Uh, this is a serious word. It's an exhortation from a father who doesn't want his children missing it. Uh, and most of you uh, will already know what this poem is about, but there may be some who don't. And just the fact that a prophetic word is spoken out into the airwaves, you don't particularly have to be listening to it on my video. It is out there. And the Father and Holy Spirit can direct it to whomever they want. So I don't know if you knew that, but um, the words that he speaks just go on forever. They're frequencies that will always be in the atmosphere. That's why it's important that what we speak is life and not death. Okay, so this is our exhortation. Do you, in this is Psalm 58, verse 1. This is where he led her first. Do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? That's quite a question. And then he said to her, speak up, my children. Speak out. Speak with your feet. Speak with your vote. Do you think I am well pleased if you choose to sit on the fence and not vote because you do not like either candidate? This is a fight between good and evil, not Republican versus Democrat. This is a choice between true liberty and freedom and pure evil and slavery. I say to you, my children, sitting on the fence is cowardice. And you do not speak for me or my word in that way. You are allowing the devil to intimidate you into not speaking. And when that happens, I see that your choice of inaction is a vote for evil because you will not stand for good. There is a line in one of your modern Christian songs that goes something like this. So I looked up to heaven and said, God, why don't you do something? And he said, I did. I created you. You were not created to sit on the fence. You were created to be my child, a child who is part of my body, making you my eyes, ears, voice, hands, and feet. Do you think I take pleasure in, in action? I do not. Behold, I look and see all things. Be bold as lions, my children. Go and speak with your feet and cast your vote for the side of good. I will see from heaven. Cast your vote for me, your freedoms, and the saving of the children. Do Be not afraid. Let your hearts take courage and support not the devil by your inaction. I am your victory. I am your strength. Let Jesus be your example and guide. Yes, Jesus is all that is true about my great love. But he also whipped the money changers out of my temple, calling them what they truly were. Speak with your feet, my children, for how can you speak righteousness when you remain silent on the fence? Wow. That is a powerful word that we need to take to heart. This is not a day for cowering and sitting on the fence. It won't work. You have got to choose the light or the dark. All right. Lisa H. had a very encouraging vision of a young eagle. On July 5th, 2021, my husband and I were on vacation in South Dakota. I was waking one morning, and you know, in that place that's not quite awake and still not deeply asleep, and she had this vision. In my vision, I was sitting in the driver's seat of a car that was backed against a building that was a motel in my spirit, and my husband is inside securing a room for us. It was a beautiful summer day. The soft breeze just kissed your cheek. Beautiful skyline, just full of peace and serenity. The window was down and I was admiring the beauty of nature. I could hear the birds singing just beautifully. I looked straight across from me and there were a bunch of parked cars across from where I was parked, but they were facing the opposite direction. One vehicle stood out to me. It was a tall white SUV. Then suddenly out of the corner of my right eye, I saw some movement. This movement was a very large yet young eagle. 
the brown tone of its wings. I had never seen this color in the natural. His head was so white it was casting a soft glow. I watched him fly over the parked cars, and he gradually went to my left and flew to the top of a building that was next to me. He got as far up as maybe uh, 15 feet over the top of the building, and all of a sudden, something started to drop out of his claws. He immediately swooped down and grabbed what he was about to lose, and he swooped again to try to regain his control. He was a little clumsy, and he was almost going to hit the white SUV, then gracefully swooped away, and I could hear his wings swishing in the beautiful summer, summer air. And then in my spirit, I heard the Lord say, it may seem like we were losing grip of my America, but I will not let that happen. Wow. That is uh, beautiful and very, very encouraging. All right. We have Margaret Westfall, who is our resident poet, uh, a poem to end with here before we go into our signs and wonders videos. It's called Wedding Wine. In the Gospel of John, it says, on the third day, there was a wedding. The third day after what? After Jesus was baptized in water. If a day is like a thousand years, and we are in the third thousand year day, is another wedding on the way? The first miracle that he displayed was water turned to wine. At the wedding, jars of clay, which could be like us, like mankind, held water, soon to be changed into something beautifully divine, wedding wine. The new birth Jesus would bring would change the nature of mortal man. Water and blood came from his side, pouring from him as he died. He was both man and God, mortal and immortal, like the water and wine. He died as us so that we in him would never have to die again. We are as mortal water forever changed into the wine of his immortal life. Our water baptism symbolizes cleansing from sin. Our communion symbolizes his life as us that was sacrificed. We couldn't save ourselves or cleanse ourselves except by being in him. He died being the sin that would have cost our life so we can live forever in his eternal life. We were mortal water. Now we are immortal wine. At that first miracle, the water changed when it was poured out. He poured his life out for us so we could be cleansed and saved. And then he pours us out not the same, but born again, in him, as him, not ruled by sin, ruled by love. Not a slave to sin, but a love slave, changed by our choice to be empowered entirely by him, but he chose us before we chose him. We drink the wine, but first he poured out his blood. We would have no choice if he hadn't first chosen us. What a precious mystery. Water into wine. Mortal life changed into immortality. Sin and death broken. Judgment falling on him. Our merciful, holy protection. Our innocence was resurrected by the only sacrifice worthy. Slain. Before the earth's foundation, he embodies restoration, making us who are his body incorruptible and free. Transfigured bride, made inseparably one with him. Eternal Christ, joy of heaven, wine of life. Ah, that is stunning. Just beautiful. I love the anointing that is on Margaret's life. And many of you also have a wonderful anointing in sharing the things that he shares with you. All right, let's see here. 
Um, nope, nope. I, that's, that's not pulling up. What I want. I need the whole lineup. Pretty please. Let's see here. There we go. Woohoo. All right. Uh, Candy M uh, sent in this picture. She happened to be visiting her mom in Pennsylvania, and this large pink host appeared in the skies. Now, I take that as a really good sign over Pennsylvania. It's one of those hard fought for states, and we want to see it turn to righteousness again. So beautiful, beautiful photo. Uh, LaVon B. Uh, sent this. It um, And she put a scripture with it, which I love. It's a glory V that appeared over the skies of Oklahoma. And she put Habakkuk 1.5 in the NIV version. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. I like that kind of surprise. And that is coming to us. Uh, Margaret P. sent us this. We have a boomerang right here. Boomerang arrow and a pink arrow host. Let me make that one a little bit bigger. Yeah, there's the arrow host and there's the boomerang. There's a lot of pink clouds in these last set of pictures and a lot of hosts. I, I just think the father is just putting his stamp on this and saying, keep looking up. And I do want you all to be praying that someone else will step up and fill this spot, that they will start showing signs and wonders videos and sharing what other people have heard, because I think it is a true blessing for your voices to be heard and, and what you hear blesses so many others. So will you please be praying about that? If you feel like the Holy Spirit is saying, yep, I want you to do that, you get in contact with me, email me, okay? And we'll figure out what to do from there. All right, Diane R.W. sent us this picture of a host over Greece. Uh, this is pretty uh, amazing photo. You'll see the nose, the eye, the hair is very detailed. Now, I thought these were wings, but I don't think they are. I think he is carrying something. There's his body and his legs. So that, I don't know what that is. Is that a mantle? Is it, I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but that is a pretty awesome picture. Uh, Kathy K sent us this. Okay, so there is a lovely a glory portal here with a rainbow around it. But in it, you will see there's a silhouette, nose, mouth, hair, uh, DJT. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel B sent us this one. It is um, a whole group of hosts. Uh, rising up uh, like a column of them. I love that. So that's one of the host pictures. Here's another one. Uh, this one is Kelly B. And it is a sky full of beautiful hosts. Some of them are glory filled. There's kind of light on all of them. Again, it's just that it's a whole column for of them. Reinforcements. Kathy S. sent us these beautiful pink hosts that appeared in the sunset over the skies of Indiana. So again, we have got us a whole screen full of hosts, and these are pink, which, of course, I love. Jen T. sent this um, eagle, and she took this picture. It's actually in a spot that overlooks East Tennessee and North Carolina, both areas that receive severe damage. So. The eagle is flying over. He's looking to assess what needs to be done, what help needs to be sent. Deborah Ann sent this whirlwind that appeared. And it wasn't really a whirlwind. It just has the appearance of a whirlwind. But God is sending his whirlwind to stir things up. 
Uh, Melissa V sent this sword. That's a pretty cool sword there. There's its hilt and its handle. And Gail W. sent us this amazing fire glory sunset. It is warfare from dark to light over the skies of Indiana. And here is an eye-shaped glory portal. Now, that's not the only one we're going to see today. I just love the theme, the themes that he uh, showed in these final pictures that we're showing until somebody else takes this task up. Uh, Susie sent in this. This is a, just a chunk of rainbow that appeared in the sky, but there are hosts streaming out of that rainbow. So we have another sky full of hosts coming out of this rainbow. So cool. Uh, Brittany Rose sent us this one, our, and it is a glory fire missile. She's our artist that we showed last week. So here it is. That missile is on fire and on course to strike the darkness right here. And Rachel B. sent this photo. Her son took this over the skies of Virginia. And it's pink host, which, of course, another sky full of pink hosts. That's just like they're being sent out on the mission. And right here, there's a fire heart. That is just beautiful. Wow. Deb D. sent us this picture. It is hosts. They are arising around what look like marine creatures to me in the sky. See, this thing looks like a big fishy kind of thing, and this thing is some kind of a marine thing too. And they're kind of shadowed, so I think they aren't good ones, and then the hosts are coming to deal with that. Stephanie sent us this. Look at this dragon. Here are its eyes. It's almost like crocodile eyes. And then here's the wide open mouth. And there's the leg, another leg, long, long body. So it's kind of a crocodile, leviathan, uh, dragon creature, kind of a mixture. Uh, this was actually um, off of the Cloud Club Facebook page. And what's good about this dragon is he's being confronted. There are hosts moving in from all directions. This looks like a weapon aimed at him. So, cool picture. Bernadette F. sent us this. And it is a feather-filled glory. Look at this feather. Absolutely shining in the glory. That is amazing. And then there's a lot else in this picture as well. Um, there's a creature... A, who looks like a swordfish right here. There's his body. And his head is here. And um, she wasn't sure whether this was good or bad. And I'm not either. So uh, just take a look at this picture and see what you think. But this does seem like this arrow is coming towards him. And then there's other activity around him. Things moving in the sky. All right, this one is by Leisha Y. And this is a fiery sunset that's actually producing smoke. Now, those are really clouds and not smoke, but doesn't this look like a molten fire with either black lava or black smoke being released? And we have the dark to light, and this is like burning it up. Powerful picture. This one is Joanne G.H. Uh, this is actually a picture that Dan Scavino posted on his, probably Instagram. And it is a fiery sunset that occurred while DJT was on the way to a rally. So I like seeing that fire in the sky. And right here is a big arrow host. And up here, frequencies coming to change the atmosphere. Pretty cool. Mark D sent this one. We have a heart portal right there. Very, very precious. Let me push that up a little bit so you can see that. And uh, there's, there's, this is either a host 
or a watcher or a witness. I'm not sure what, but he is there on the scene uh, watching over. We have a lot on our side that are with us and helping us. Firefly sent this amazing photo. It is, again, we have that eye-shaped portal, and it is sending out frequencies. This is going to totally change the atmosphere where they are being released. That's pretty cool. A Cheyenne sent us this glory fire sunset that includes a glory pillar of fire that is confronting the darkness. So see, here is that pillar of fire going up, and here's this dark cloud trying to move in, but it's just like the Israelites in the desert when the pillar of fire protected them from the evil. A child of God sent this uh, beautiful feather quills. Getting filled up in the glory, we felt like to write his message in the sky. So you see all these, they're like feather quills. They're not just feathers because they're they have the quill exposed, so I think they're pens dipping in the glory, and they're going to write his messages on the sky to us, who will look and read them. Uh, this is Beck, and it shows a figure in the clouds standing in a portal of glory. This is just a beautiful picture with glory coming out all over, and let me make this a little bigger. And you'll see there is someone standing there in the portal, watching, waiting. That's amazing. Betty E. sent this picture. Her daughter-in-law took the photo after Betty told her about anointing her house and casting out any evil. She went outside, and here were these huge host wings over her home. Is that cool or what? Wow. And here we have Zaya sent this, and this was taken in North Carolina, and it was in a rose garden, I think at the state fair, and she caught, captured a rainbow, a rose rainbow that appeared in the photograph. A little bit hard to see, you know, just on a big screen like this, but this is definitely rainbow rose here. It's very beautiful. Uh, next, we had Juanita M., and these are glory portals and cracks that appeared in the skies over South Africa. So you see this glory portal is coming down, shining into the water, and then there are these cracks that allow glory to come pushing through to defeat the darkness. Michelle sent us this one. And it is a glory fire sunset over California. Like to see that fire burning away impurities there and uncovering truth and light for them. My heart's still there a lot. I lived there for 35 years in Southern California, so I love California. Isabel G. sent this one. It is a lighted tornado amidst Many, many host wings. Again, we have a whole sky of host wings. And then this twisting, lighted up tornado, I'm sure, being propelled by their wings. Uh, Kelly B. sent us this. The photographer was Mello DC, and it is a huge host over the skies of Arizona. So again, we've got huge, huge host. Uh, this one is, lost my place, and that name it ended up being so small. Denise. I see Denise, and she's Denise B. This is really cool. It is a host with double wings. So here's this head, face, and there's a set of wings, and there's a set of wings, and there's the body. So really cool. Because we know there are angels who have more than one set of wings. Um, Mary T. sent this one. It is a host wing in the glory. And then there are other host wings uh, 
coming off of the sun. And this was taken over the skies of Minnesota, where we know God is at work. So big, big wings all over again. And then these glory-filled ones. And there's arrow host right there. All right. And here, Kerwin and Latari L sent us this. Uh, Latari was actually the, the photographer. She caught a, a rainbow around the sun and host wings lighting up in it. So this is a complete sunbow, absolute complete. And then there's host wings going through it, um, lit up by the glory. That's really, really beautiful. Uh, this one is, let me find my place. There's a name, again, that name ended up being, I think this is BJR. Yeah. This is BJR. Again, a sky full of hosts. And this is Michigan. So these photos were all from different places. And it's just so cool to see the father is sending reinforcements and help everywhere. All right, Terry S. sent this one. It is a rainbow arrow host intersecting another host. So they must be going to join forces. So here's this rainbow host. You can see a leg down here. And then there's another host flying in, and they are like intersecting. And then there's a host wing here as well. Uh, uh, Kathy S. No, yeah, Kathy S sent us this sky full of a pink sunrise, and there are hosts just filling the sky. This is over Indiana. So again, we've got those uh, beautiful, beautiful hosts filling the sky. And again, pink. <laughs> Celia S. shared this sunset glory fire that appeared over the skies of Georgia. Oh my goodness, look at that. The glory is shooting out, and this is a fire, just glory fire. Amazing. Uh, Gwen O shared this picture with us. It, no, this is Natasha's. Sorry, got one ahead. Natasha S sent this sky full of these are all frequencies that are going out to change the atmosphere. And this is from Trinidad and Tobago. So we know that the islands are important to the Father too, and he is going to intervene in those places where they have not had justice. So again, this is Gwen O, a fiery glory uh, sunset, and this is over the skies of Virginia, but you'll see this uh, eye portal, just glory on fire uh, portal over the skies of Virginia. Now, our last picture somehow ended up right here, and here it is, uh, sent by Sandra G. And this is a rainbow that's being diffused by raindrops from the I Love Canada Facebook page. So uh, I just thought this was a good one to end with. It is glorious. And you'll see Canadian geese flying across in the rain and the rainbow light just being spread by the rain. So I think there's a message there that when the rains come, they can spread the rainbow. They can spread his covenant promises as we share his good news, the water of life. All right. Thank you all for joining me for this, our last episode of Signs and Wonders. Until someone else decides to take up this task, because... I have a feeling they will. This is just something so good, so encouraging. Thank you all to all of you through all these episodes who have contributed photos, uh, words, dreams, uh, visions, just experiences and encounters, and just your wisdom as you have walked with the Lord. It is so appreciated. I love you all. And be sure to tune in to my weekly video. I don't want to lose you. I want to keep touch with you. And of course, um, the ways to follow me and read my words on my email that are all in the description box that you have to click open a couple times under the title of the video. All right, till we meet again, let's pray together. 
Um, Father, thank you, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share what your people are hearing from you and what they are seeing as you put signs and wonders, your messages across the sky for us. We thank you for being such a good, good father. Continue to cause them to look up and see your signs and wonders. Let their ears and hearts be open to hear your voice, to have encounters with you, visions and dreams. And we thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, I just thought of something when I was praying. Oh, I know. Many of you are hearing so clearly from the Father, really, really good words. Uh, and I would encourage you, find a way to start sharing those. Let the Holy Spirit help you. Uh, should you start posting them somewhere? Should you start a blog? Do a video of your own? Um, just let him lead and guide you. But you are valuable. What you're hearing is very valuable. All right. Love you all. Till we meet again, I love you and bless you. In the name of the great I am.